Hi, and welcome to this video on the properties of living systems, sort of an introduction to the things that make particular systems in the universe living systems. And while we're here at the beginning, I'm going to go ahead and uh, give you a vocabulary term that you're going to want to keep in your mind. So anytime we're talking about a living system, we're going to probably start using the word organism. I'll probably use it back and forth with living systems. So it's definitely a word that you want to be aware of as we move not only through the video, but through the course. An organism is any living thing. It could be a cell, it could be you, it could be anything that is alive. So in this video, we're going to talk about living things as systems. And then we're gonna talk about the particular properties that living systems have that make them alive. So before we get too far into it, let's make sure that we all understand what a system is. So a system is a human concept that we use in order to describe any collection of components that function together in ways that the individual components don't have by themselves. Your computer or your phone or whatever it is that you're using to watch this video is a system. It's got a series of components that are put together. So it's not just living things that can be systems, right? But in order to have a system, we need to have a couple of different things. We need to have the system itself, and then we need to have some sort of boundary between it and its surroundings. So the surroundings are anything outside of the system and the system is inside and we can have interchange, right? We can have movement of stuff from the surroundings to the system and the other way as well. But that's this idea. Um, and pretty much anything could be thought of as a system. You can have a system of, you know, your bed or even a pencil, right? That's a, that's a system, not very interesting systems, not really <laughs> probably something we'd want to study, but definitely systems. Uh, you could have a system of things that don't even exist in re in the real world. Yeah, so you can have like a system in mathematics, which can be like a set, a set of numbers is could be thought of as a system. So all of these things are examples of systems. We're going to focus, obviously, in this course on living systems. So yeah, so living things definitely are systems. I had to pick a living thing in order to really uh, illustrate this point. I went with this picture of this chameleon here, and the chameleon is a series of components. It's a series of internal systems and each of those systems is made out of smaller and smaller components. It's really a system of systems and it's got a boundary between it and its environment. Living things are open systems and what we mean by that is that stuff can go in so we can have a series of inputs which would be you know food, information about the environment can enter into the nervous system of the chameleon. And of course, we can have a series of outputs as well. Things like waste, lost energy in the form of things like heat. And then inside of the system, we'll have a series of processes that occur. Processes that take the inputs and convert them to outputs. We will call these in living systems life processes. And these are going to be a function of the properties of living things, which we'll start to talk about in the next section of this video. So it's notoriously hard to define life. It's been a tricky thing for as long as we've been studying living things and understanding that there are differences between living things and non-living things. And by far the most common approach that's taken is the approach where we try to describe life by stating the characteristics or the properties that living systems have that make them alive. This kind of approach to naming something or describing something is what's called an essentialist focus, yeah? Anytime you're being essentialist, you're describing something by describing the properties that make it that thing. And so what I've done here is I've found pictures on the internet of chameleons and lizards and some other things that illustrate the properties of living systems. So we can start to understand why this chameleon or really any living thing can be considered to be alive. So we'll start up here on the top left where we have this rather upset chameleon. It has identified some sort of threat in its environment and it is responding to that threat through a threat display. Yeah, it's an angry chameleon. But really the point here is that living things can respond to their environment. They can get information about their environment and they can change their behavior or their physiology as a result. And you see things like our threatened chameleon or all sorts of other things. Another thing that living systems can do is that they can acquire matter 
and energy from their environment and use that matter and energy inside of themselves as part of those life processes. You can use the energy to grow. You can use the energy to reproduce. You'll actually wind up losing a lot of energy. It'll actually leave as output. Now, lizards and other animals go and acquire both matter and energy together in the food that they eat, such as this fly. But many organisms can actually produce their own high energy food using energy in the environment, particularly sunlight, which is, of course, how plants and other photosynthetic organisms work. If we scroll down, we see some other things. Our friend over here shows us that there are different chameleons in the world. So living systems can change over time. Yeah. So this property of change is pretty unique to living systems. Change over time. And it happens in two different like fundamental time scales. The first is at the individual level. You will grow and change as you go through your life cycle. Just like these chameleons do. The other thing that will occur is that populations will change over time from generation to generation yeah so populations change and we call that process evolution and we'll talk a lot more about that later on in this course but this idea of a living system changing over time is pretty foundational to understanding what makes something alive of course living systems can make copies of themselves so they can reproduce just like other animals in the world Chameleons and other lizards reproduce sexually, so they have two biological sexes that each contribute cells to forming the next generational organism. But most living things actually reproduce asexually, and even inside of sexually reproducing organisms, most of the cells in our bodies are reproducing asexually by dividing. And finally, I hinted at the last and probably most foundational aspect of Earth-bound living systems, which is that they are made out of cells. At least one cell is required in order to be alive. If you're not made out of at least one cell, you are not traditionally thought of as alive. You need to be at least one cell big. And so these are the properties of living systems. All of these things together are what we would expect to see in any living system. And for the purpose of this class, they're what you need to be aware of. So as we wrap up this video, let's make sure that we can do the following things here at the end and get a good handle on them. The first is that you want to make sure that you can explain how living things can be understood as systems. What a system is and why we think about living things as systems. You want to explain how the structure of living things leads to their properties, though we'll get more into that over the rest of this course. And you definitely want to understand what makes living systems different from non-living ones. If you have a living system, you should be able to explain what we would expect to see in order to know that it was alive as compared to something that was not alive. Other than that, that's all I have for today. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you can do the things in the previous slide, then you have a really good handle on this material. If not, that's okay too. Pause the video and write down any questions that you have so that you can get the answers that you need. Thanks again for watching. I really appreciate it. Have a good day.